Hi, thanks for having me. My name is uh, Rafa Pajes. I'm one of the founders of Holograms, and we're a company uh, bringing 3D humans to augmented and virtual reality. Uh, we use a technology that is called volumetric video capture, and, uh, and the mission of the company is making this technology easier, more affordable, so there's uh, better and, and more ways of creating content for AR and VR. Well, volumetric video or volumetric video capture is a technology that allows you to capture people in 3D. Uh, in, in general, it's more like uh, dynamic people. So people who are doing a performance, that are dancing, that are acting, that are just talking in front of the camera. Uh, what you'll get um, out of a volumetric video capture session is uh, is the full performance that that person has done in full 3D. So you get a set of 3D models that then you can integrate into your application. It's slightly different to um, what, uh, for instance, motion capture would be. In this case, we capture everything, all the shape and appearance of the person, and not only an animation, not only the movements. Well, that's, uh, I love this question because there's so many cool tech right now that it's uh, out there in the market. Uh, I think probably what I like the most is uh, everything that brings uh, this future of augmented reality, of holograms, of volograms, of uh, 3D content in general closer to the to the to the users, right? So uh, maybe the the easy answer would be to say, yeah, my favorite my favorite piece of technology are AR glasses or something like that. But I actually really like. Um, a company that is called Looking Glass Factory, that they are uh, developing these little holographic screens that are basically light field screens um, that allow you to see in 3D directly without the need of having glasses or anything like that. It, it almost like a photo photo um, photo frame <laughs> that has some volumetric uh, capabilities. So you can actually put 3D content inside and you can experience and see the content that we create directly there. I actually have one right behind me over there. <laughs> So uh, uh, I just started playing with it. I'm, I'm one of the testers of their new of their new device, and uh, and I think it's pretty cool. I think it's going to have a lot of impact. This is just like a little toy, this the small one, um, but they also do like big screens with uh, the ones that are 8K resolution. So having these alternatives where you can see 3D content without the glasses or without anything specifically, just by looking at it, I think it's a uh, very important for the future of this type of, uh, of, uh, of 3D content. There's many ways of, of capturing volumetric uh, content. So typically, or, or the most common one, you will see it with, uh, with just standard cameras. So you have a setup, as I was saying earlier, with uh, dozens of cameras. Uh, it can go from 12 cameras, for instance, uh, as we have in the, stu in the studio here in Dublin, to up to hundreds of cameras, uh, standard cameras, so just a normal camera that you can do maybe for video recording um, in, in different places, looking at the person from different viewpoints. But you can also use uh, depth sensors. So this means that you can use the, uh, this Kinect or infrared sensors that give you some information about the depth, about how far uh, the person is from the camera, and not only how far the person is, but how far the whole shape of the person. So you can combine about a bunch of these sensors to be able to extract this depth information from all of them at the same time, synchronize them and be able to get the, the, the shape of the person. Uh, typically, when you do um, volumetric capture using standard cameras and, and a process called multi-view stereo, or uh, some people call it uh, videogrammetry, even though it's a little bit more complex than that, um, you have normally better results, so the quality is a little bit better, but it has the, the drawback that it takes longer to process. If you use depth sensors, it typically takes less time, but the, the data that you're able to get from the depth sensor is typically a little bit more noisy, uh, kind of grainier, so you need to apply all the type of uh, processing to the to the results so to be able to get something that is good for the studio and good for the professionals. But in general, you will see normal cameras or depth sensors. Those are kind of the two strategies to do volumetric capture. That's a very interesting question to <laughs> to answer to. Uh, some people would say that are exactly the same, and we've seen that in in some in some industries and some companies have adopted the term hologram to describe volumetric video content because at the end of the day what you have is a 3D representation of a person which looks like you know if you're looking at it in augmented reality it could look like a proper hologram. Um, we never liked using the term hologram directly even though the name of the company holograms comes from 
volumetric holograms um, because a hologram can be so much more. It can be completely different things. It, can, it doesn't even have to have any volume. It can just be completely flat. At the end of the day, a hologram is a kind of a light entity. Uh, so where, where you can see without the need of any glasses or anything like that. So calling a hologram to anything that is an augmented reality, it's not completely accurate. And and me in particular, that comes from, from uh, I come from the science world, right? So I have a PhD in, in this field. Uh, I don't feel fully comfortable calling the content that we create holograms. But uh, what we do at the end of the day is 3D models. And these 3D models can be represented as holograms. It can be represented as 2D images, or they can be represented in augmented reality through your phone, through your tablet, or through classes. Uh, so they are very similar. But what I would say is that a hologram is, is a 3D model or a set of 3D models that can be integrated in many different types of platforms, and it could even become a hologram. So there has been uh, many uses uh, for volumetric capture um, and in the last few years in general. Um, you will see that this technology is really good for bringing humans into virtual and augmented reality. So any production that requires a human, uh, you could either do it having an avatar, uh, basically a, a model of a 3D human created by a person or created by an artist or you can do it recording with volumetric video. Uh, doing it with volumetric video, it, you end up having a lot more um, quality, a better perception, um, and it takes a lot less effort, let's say manual effort. But at the same time, it's a little bit more complicated to get. Uh, what we've seen is that uh, this application works really well in, in any in any uh, experience in VR or in art that, that requires humans to be there and that requires that the humans look fully realistic. Um, so there has been applications, for instance, in in the training space where you need like a person to explain how to do something uh, sometimes for soft skills when you uh, are interacting with another human and not with an avatar and not with a cartoon, let's say, of, a, of another person. Uh, but there's been plenty of applications, for instance, in marketing, uh, where you need a brand ambassador that you need to need, need it to be the ambassador and not like an avatar of them. So like the real version of the person. And, uh, and there's been plenty of also cultural and artistic projects. Uh, we've done a, few, a bunch of these and, and these are in particular my favorite because you see that um, you can actually bring the concept of an audio guide uh, or, or a tourist guide directly to a, from a, from a real person to actually being a, a volumetric video capture of that person. So this means that you don't need to have physically that person with you all the time, uh, and you can reuse it and and kind of augment and and uh, make really cool experiences directly in museums or in in cultural sites and, and stuff like that. So. Uh, for example, one very cool example uh, that we did was with a, a castle here in Ireland uh, where we had uh, a lord of the castle, uh, well, it was an actor, of course, dressed up as the lord of the castle, uh, volumetrically captured. And then there was an, an, uh, an installation where you could go there and you could see um, with, a, with a tablet in augmented reality, the lord of the castle uh, talking to you and explaining how the castle, were, uh, the story of the castle, right? Um, and we've done also like, um, theater plays directly in virtual and augmented reality with real actors. Uh, so I think that in general, for all cultural applications, having a real person there makes like a big difference. So uh, yeah, sometimes these, these uh, experiences are not the one that make it to the news because are not the ones that uh, bring the most uh, revenues, let's say, but are the ones in, on the other hand that have uh, the, the, the higher impact, I guess.